The Conqueror is one of the grand dams of the Swift portfolio, but in recent years it has suffered something of an identity crisis. First, Swift introduced the elegance over and above it, and the Conqueror started to lose its way. Then it was dropped entirely. Then it was revived, but in an elegance body shell, for a little bit less money with a little bit less spec. Now it's been reborn again for 2018. It's no longer in the Smart HT body shell, but the lighter and slightly less expensive Smart Plus body shell, the same as a Challenger, although it's wider than a Challenger as befitting its status as one rung down from the Swift flagship. That means that Swift has been able to put in more kit without ramping the price right up, and it's given it its own unique identity for 2018, which is great to see. This van is absolutely packed with kit. We've got all the Alco goodies. We've got a bespoke front end with a very neat aerodynamic look. It's got an external gas barbecue point, external lockers, external 230 volt point, and around the back, an integrated rear view camera. This back panel's new as well, and there's plenty more to see inside. Now, I was going to show you the lounge first, but let's save the best till last. After all, things are pretty good back here too. For 2018, the Conqueror is a seven model range, with the old 570 having gone the way of pretty much every fixed near side bed model. It's gone. This one is kind of the entry level. It's the 480, with a classic front lounge, rear washroom layout, a two berth, and it's simply colossal back here. It's huge, you can really feel the benefit of that extra width. And talking of huge, check out that sideboard. It's massive, a perfect place to put your TV. Hence the provision of just about every kind of power socket and aerial point, apart from, unfortunately, a USB point. Now talking of sockets, it's great to see two in the kitchen too. Ideal if you want to use a toaster and a kettle in the morning without having to put them all over the van. And here in the kitchen you start to see that extra spec I was talking about. Once again we've got those lovely Fenix worktops, they really do look very stylish indeed. Standard microwave and a top spec Dometic hob with a dual fuel and separate oven and grill. There's good storage in here too, we've got a huge drawer and then down here Duriger wire racks. They're a really useful addition. Other spec boosts in this van include an Omnivent overhead and some really nice lighting options. I particularly like these halo lighting over the lockers. Plus, of course, Aldi wet central heating. And you'll feel the benefit of that in the washroom where there's a radiator. That's alongside the electric flush loo. Although it's a bit of a shame it hasn't got a concealed system like most flagship vans these days. There's a huge cupboard in the corner of the washroom and beside it, a good sized vanity unit with a cabinet, a big sink, and a massive mirror. In the near side corner, you'll find the shower cubicle, which has got a new shower tray with an EcoCamel Orbit shower head as part of a new, rather smart, backlit shower riser. And here we are, and didn't I say it was worth waiting for? This lounge is really quite special. I think it's fair to say that in the past, Conqueror buyers have tended to be quite traditional, and this really does play up to that buyer. It is a very luxurious place to be and a very comfortable one without being too modern or too cold and sterile. We've got warm Arali Sen woodwork with gloss finish and that rather nice piano black inlaid wood too. The furnishings too, they're quite subtle but very attractive. In particular, these dusky pink curtains and cushions, they look really great. And it's all set off by some fantastic lighting. We've got those strip lights overhead, corner spotlights in each corner, and these new, rather nice Art Deco style corner light units. The sofas themselves are hugely long. You could sit six people around in here, and of course that means they make reasonable single beds. However, if you like each other, no problem. Pull the slats out from beneath the centre chest, rearrange the cushions, and it's a massive double bed. There's plenty of storage, of course, underneath each of these sofas, although the one on this side is a bit restricted by the consumer unit, but it's great to see drop-down flaps on either side to give you easy access to it, plus there is that external hatch on the near side. Overhead, well, there's a mass of lockers. We've got six in the lounge here, three on each side, including these neat little corner ones which make use of space that could otherwise be dead. There's a centre chest, of course, with a pull-out table, 
but if you need more than that, there is a proper freestanding table. It's just a shame it's stored right at the back of the van in a little cupboard in front of the shower. Behind the table, we've got the now traditional Swift Pod with two 230 volt sockets, aerial points and a 12 volt point. Although I do suspect that most people will keep their TVs over there on the sideboard. I do have one complaint. Again, we've got no USB points. Bearing in mind that this is a top spec van and it's 2018, it would have been nice to see them pop one in there. Talking of top spec, look at that sunroof. It's absolutely huge. And that's one of the reasons why this lounge area is so well lit. We've got a rather nice surround that takes in the roof light as well. Although it is a bit of a shame that this shelf beneath the sunroof is quite so pronounced. So having been usurped, dropped, relaunched and then relaunched again, has the Conqueror finally hit upon the perfect formula? Do you know what? I think it might just have done. That extra width giving a fantastic sense of space, the luxury spec and that clear identity really gives you a reason to pick it over an elegance, apart from the fact that it's just a little bit cheaper. I have a sneaking suspicion that in 2018, it might just be all conquering.